Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, K Street lobbyist, and host of Behind the Curtain, Saturday mornings at 10 on Newsmax TV. Also, Virginia Democratic Delegate Mark Levine. Catch his nationally syndicated radio show, Inside Scoop, weekdays at 3 p.m. on MarkLevineTalk.com. It was a big week for Hillary Clinton. On Tuesday, she won all five Democratic primary contests and added to her delegate lead over Bernie Sanders. We are moving closer to securing the Democratic Party nomination and winning this election in November. So, Mark, is she right? Is the Democratic primary over, and should Bernie drop out? I don't think he should drop out. I do think she's won the nomination. I do think it will be virtually impossible for him to catch up. But Bernie Sanders does a really good thing, both for the Democratic Party and for Hillary. He has a very strong message. He gets a lot of people out. People do care about how our system is tilted toward the wealthy. And she, he makes Hillary Clinton a better candidate, a stronger candidate. So I'm glad he's here. I'm glad his supporters are here. And we're all going to unite together behind the Democratic nominee in November. Well, maybe not so fast, Mark. A lot of that is true. Now, the big issue for Hillary Clinton is whether it's the same issue Obama faced. Will she have to put Bernie Sanders on the ticket in order to unify the Democratic Party? Obviously, she doesn't want to do that. Will she have to? I or will so. a lot of these millennials stay home? Bernie Sanders is like Bobby Kennedy. You know, that's the choice that Hubert Humphrey might have had in 68. That's why I analogize it to 68. Hubert Humphrey, had Kennedy lived, may have had exactly that choice. Hillary Clinton will have that choice this year. You have to understand the Democratic base is already depressed. Turnout is very low. No, Trump has no, no, Republican no, no. Actually, base very high. The reason why they're not voting so much is because they're very happy with both choices. It's been a very cordial debate. Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders agree on the vast majority of issues. I don't think he's right for vice president, but I do think he has a great place in a Hillary Clinton cabinet. Maybe Secretary of Health and Human Services. All right, let's move on to the Republican side. Donald Trump won four out of five states, but lost Ohio to Governor John Kasich. Senator Ted Cruz posted a goose egg, and Senator Marco Rubio dropped out. While it is not God's plan that I be president in 2016, or, or maybe ever, and while today my campaign is suspended, the fact that I've even come this far is evidence of how special America truly is. And all the reason more why we must do all we can to ensure that this nation remains a special place. Rubio's campaign imploded earlier this month after a series of personal attacks against Donald Trump. What does Rubio's political future look like, Jack? Oh, it's, it's tough. I mean, it, it, it's tough, Morris. I think what will happen, obviously he hopes that Hillary Clinton wins. If Hillary Clinton wins, I suppose he'll just try it again in 2020, I think with the same result. The real yeah, but issue, what's he gonna do in the meantime? Well, I mean, that's just it. What's he gonna do in the meantime? When you give up the Senate seat, it's tough. Like Paul Ryan kept the House seat, that kept him in play. When you, when you leave the Senate, it's tough. I predict he'll try it again in 2020. You asked the relevant question, how will he keep himself relevant? Uh, he can't. I predict that what will happen to Rubio is he'll have to recycle himself uh, maybe in eight or ten years back through Florida politics, win another Senate seat, run for governor, something like that. And if he can get all through that, maybe in, in later in his life he can be a presidential candidate. Meanwhile, the Cruz campaign is clinging to the slim chance that he can win enough delegates to claim the presidential nomination before the GOP convention. He didn't win a single contest on Tuesday, but Cruz did pick up a surprise endorsement from Senator Lindsey Graham. He He's raising money for Cruz despite saying this at the Washington Press Club last month. A good Republican would defend Ted Cruz after tonight. That ain't happening. <laughs> if you killed Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate and the trial was in the Senate, nobody could convict you. <laughs> Talk about a flip-flop. Mark, you must be loving this. You know, I think uh, Graham said at one point that, uh, you know, choosing Donald Trump was like being shot and, and choosing uh, Ted Cruz was like eating poison. I guess he picked his poison. Uh, you know, people don't like Ted Cruz. Uh, they don't like him in the Senate. It's one of the things I learned, actually, as a Virginia delegate, is how important personal relationships are. And let me tell you, Ted Cruz doesn't have any. Uh, I don't think he has any chance, but against the, the evil that is Donald Trump to the Republican 
Republican Party, I guess Graham had to pick his well, poison. Well, ideology aside, okay, the one thing you can say about Ted Cruz, whether you love him or hate him, is he's very consistent on all of his values, on all of his beliefs, on all of his stands. Lindsey Graham has been all over the map. He's like Mitt Romney. He might even be worse. Here you have a liberal Republican that, to keep his name in the press, and that's really all it's about for Lindsey Graham, wants to endorse Ted Cruz because he knows the press will cover it. I don't know why Lindsey Graham would have some kind of hatred of uh, a Donald Trump. I think that's ridiculous. He barely knows Donald Trump. I think he, has, he fears he doesn't, for, for the Republican Party He doesn't have some kind of life's country. history with him. I think it's downright silly. All right, well, let's move on to Trump. He added delegates on Tuesday and is sounding like a candidate campaigning for the general election. I spoke with Mitch McConnell today. We had a great conversation. The fact is, we have to bring our party together. We have to bring it together. Trump is taking heat, though, from all sides. Democratic and Republican super PACs are airing ads against him. Elected officials from both parties are campaigning against him. Dozens of rabbis plan to boycott his speech to the nation's pro-Israeli lobbying group. The list goes on and on. Jack, can he unite the party, or are we headed to a contested convention? Oh, I think the former. I, I think, Morris, three big states remain, Pen Pennsylvania, New York, and California. New York uh, in a couple of weeks, I think in about 10 days. Trump will win all three of those states. I can't imagine in any of those states that Cruz will be strong. I haven't looked at polls, but I'm sure Trump will win them. And in winner take all, I really don't know how anyone is calculating that Trump won't get to 1227. So I see, I see very little chance of a contested convention. The one thing nobody's really pointing out, Morris, Rubio, his entire campaign was ill-timed. He shouldn't have quit this week, and I'll tell you why. Had Rubio stayed in the race, he might have had a chance to, to garner more delegates. If you'd had that fourth candidate in the race, that might have been enough to stop Trump from getting to 1227. Rubio didn't think of that. He was just thinking of the embarrassment in Florida, and he got yeah. out. But what Rubio missed, he missed the main point. If the convention is brokered, I don't think there's much chance of that, but if he had found a way to force a brokered convention, he would likely be the nominee. I'm not sure he understood that. He needed a consultant like you, Jack. <laughs> Mark, I, looking from the Democratic side, do you think this is going to be a contested convention? You know, I actually think that uh, if the more candidates stay in, the more that helps Donald Trump. I think if Kasich got out and it truly were a Trump Cruz race, then I think Trump could easily win. Uh, then I think actually Cruz could, could win a majority of, of some of the races going out. But uh, with Kasich representing the more moderate Republicans and Cruz representing the hard right, the evangelical right, I think Trump will get a plurality in virtually every contest, and I think he'll probably earn enough or almost enough delegates that they won't have a broker convention. All right. Back in Washington, President Obama nominated Merrick Garland to the U.S. Supreme Court. He's a moderate and chief judge for the D.C. Court of Appeals who made a name for himself on the Oklahoma City bombing case. I simply ask Republicans in the Senate to give him a fair hearing and then an up or down vote. If you don't, then it will not only be an abdication of the Senate's constitutional duty, it will indicate a process for nominating and confirming judges that is beyond repair. It will mean everything is subject to the most partisan of politics, everything. As Obama laments over partisan politics, Democrats are marshalling their resources to use this nomination against Republicans in the fall. Mark, as I heard the train coming down the tracks, it must mean something there in that soundbite. Who's playing politics here? Well, clearly the Republicans are. There's never been a point in all of American history when the Senate has refused oh to even hear a nominee. I looked, and the average time throughout American history when they've confirmed a nominee is nine days. In more recent times, it's a little under two months. The longest time in all of American history that the Senate has, has not yet confirmed a nominee, although they had hearings during this time, was Louis Brandeis, and that was four months. This is unprecedented. All of this American is a complete history. abdication of the Constitution of the United Here, States. Here's where this and is. this is a moderate. This right. is a 63-year-old. The Republicans would be okay. smart to take uh, President Obama on his offer. Hey. If not, President Hillary Clinton okay. should nominate an extremely liberal justice, and because the Republicans want to play politics with it, they're going to forcibly politicize well, the court. Jack, let me jump Trevor in, Moore. because yeah. some people People argue that Mitch McConnell is playing with fire here. Judge Garland is a moderate choice. What if Hillary Clinton gets elected and she nominates someone more liberal? Well, I don't know. Most of the Republican Senate might not suggest he's a moderate, but we can leave aside the ideological debate. Look, the Democrats are going to win this one. They're going to win the politics on this. If I were Obama and Hillary, if I'm the Clinton campaign right now, I don't want to vote. What I want is the issue. You don't want the result. You want the issue. If it goes to a vote, then the issue kind of dies away. So the away. Republicans are playing you, in Democratic hands then, no, right, you play, That's right. If you, if okay. the Democrats win 
either way. You're right, Mark, because if you don't have a vote, that's a great rallying thing. She needs to rally the base. It rallies women on the abortion issue. It's great. They can they can wave the flag. They can wave it. This will help them at the convention. Uh, Mark America my words. If they don't give them a vote, we will win the Senate back. Jack, and one more thing, too, before we move on. Don't you think with, we've got the Reagan Democrats, everybody's coming out for Trump, or somebody who can shake things up, only because the Republicans have been the party of no for so long and people are tired Well, of that's that. a good point. You know, Gerald Ford used to make that point many years ago. He said, we can't c continue to win and be the party of no, and he was right. And Reagan became the party of yes. Ronald Reagan became that way in the 1980. He had a very, uh, uh, an affirmative platform for Republicans. Trump does, too. He wants to do things. He wants to build he a wants wall. He wants to build a wall and make he, Mexico right. At least he but wants to do something, Mark. Yes. That at least becomes the party of yes. Whether it's a bad idea or not, he wants to do something. All right, before we go, I'd like to hit one more political back and forth. It started with this ad from Donald Trump. <laughs> awesome. The Kremlin responded to that ad saying it demonizes Russia. <laughs> One day later, a super PAC backing Clinton responded as well, releasing this edited version of the same ad. Who are you consulting with consistently so that you're ready on day one? I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have a very good brain and I've said a lot of things. <laughs> All right, Mark, you're the Democrat. Who won this viral I thought video that was shootout? A, I thought that was a great response. I, I really enjoyed Other that Other than response. Vladimir Putin, is there a winner here? Yeah, here, what, what, what the Clinton campaign has done is they're letting Donald Trump mock himself. He said so many ridiculous things that this is just an example of them, but it's about a serious matter. Who's your greatest advisor? I don't have any. Trump, I'll make you a prediction. Here we for go. All, make this, make some news, fun. Jack. All right. Trump will be one of the great leaders in American history. Donald Trump is the right man at the right time. The American system has an uncanny way of producing the right man at the right time. I think they have found one here, much like Reagan. That's exactly what you're, you're about to have. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, Mark Levine, Democratic lawmaker, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Thanks, Morris. Mark. Thanks, Mark.